As you can see, there is no engine in the Mustang. I pulled the engine out for two reasons. One, it had a bad vibration, pretty much at all RPMs, especially at idle. And two, I was burning a lot of oil. This is a D1, that's a 71 block. That means it's a 302. Uh, they didn't make any um, 289s after 68. But it did still have uh, the 289 internals in it. So I'll get to that in a minute. So 302 block, 71. And it happens to be a Mexican block. You can tell from the front. I know it's upside down, but there's a, a casting protrusion here and a casting protrusion here. I think that's from when they made it. Regular 302s that Ford cast in the US don't have those. Uh, also has these much beefier main blocks, uh, main caps. The normal 302 and 29 taper at the top. So these are a lot stiffer. And also when I flip it over, you'll see on the other side, it says made in Mexico. Uh, if you look into the top here, you can see there's some uh, just slight scoring, not much cross hatching going on. It's pretty glazed over. So I'm gonna see if I can fix that. Don't know if I can get that scoring out, but we'll give it a go. These two are probably the two worst. This is cylinder uh, maybe five and six. Yeah, especially at the bottom of the cylinder, you can see it's uh, glazed over pretty good there. So, there's another good shot at the bottom. And the very little cross hashing left over. I'm sure this block has been rebuilt many, many times in the past 50 years. And here's the top of the block, and as you see, made in Mexico. Uh, I'm going to attempt to install roller lifters in here with the retrofit kit uh, meaning I have to tap this block for the spider tray but it'd be easy since it's pretty disassembled I don't have to worry about getting chips in there or hitting the cam or anything so there's no lip at the top of the cylinders so uh, I don't have to worry about that I did however run into a problem right here I don't know if you can see it but I'll have to get my micrometer and we'll measure something here Okay, this is cylinder number eight. And I noticed that the, the wear pattern, right, it's not really wear, it's more just uh, dirt you know, from the combustion chamber. But this distance on this one was different from all the rest. So let me see if I can measure this. It's kind of hard to get an exact measurement because there's nothing really to feel off of, but. Um, so, Roughly 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 306 thousandths. And if you see, if I line that up on there, I am not even close. So if I measure what that one actually is, somewhere around there, I'm getting uh, 0.371. What that is, is that's how far up the oil ring was going. It's not how far the piston was going, that's the oil ring, or the compression ring, I guess. Um, so I'm talking a difference of what, uh, 64 thousandths of an inch between these two cylinders. So either my compression ring was missing or the piston was just not going up all the way. And it turns out that when I check the connecting rods, one of my connecting rods was different. I checked the casting number on it and piston number seven right here. It's a 302 rod. So 302 rods are shorter um, to make up for the difference in stroke. So that piston was severely um, lacking in compression, I guess you could say, that whole cylinder. So basically I was running on maybe seven and a half cylinders all the time. So that's probably why I was having a bad vibration. Uh, if you look at uh, my rod bearings, they don't look so bad. And I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to replace it. But this one, 
that's piston number three. Really bad wear in there. And in fact, if I come over here, let's see if I can get out a little bit. So here's the front of the crank. Uh, this is one, uh, seven, no, five, two, and six. So right here, you can see it right there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little better for you. Oh yeah. So right there, and I can feel it with my fingernail. It catches right on there. There's some kind of gouge in the crank. Uh, so I don't know if that happened when they were installing it. They hit it with a connecting rod or it doesn't matter. I'm going to replace these. I ordered a stroker crank and uh, so this is going. Those are going. We take a look at the heads here. You can see they're pretty wet. Uh, especially this one. So that's probably why I was also burning a lot of oil. Either oil was coming in through the valve stem guides or was sneaking past those rings since the the cylinder walls were so glazed over, so another reason uh, to, to fix this right. So I also measured these valves, and they've already gotten larger valves in there. They measure, uh, it's a one point, uh, I think it's a 1.5 exhaust and a 1.94 intake, something like that. So I don't know, I might, uh, might fix them up or see if somebody else wants them. I'll probably reuse the roll rockers off there because there's not a lot of wear on those. And also if you take a look at the front of the crankshaft here you can see it's somebody wrote on there with some paint uh, 020 20. I would imagine that means it's been underground 20 thousandths already. So it definitely needs to be reground again uh, to be used. I don't know how far you can regrind these. 30 thousandths would be enough. The rest of it doesn't look too bad. I don't really see any scoring in there. Just need to get that gouge out of it right there. So the rest of it looks in really good shape. Okay, if we look at my little book here for the connecting rods, you can see under 289, 221, 289. Rod length is 5.155. Uh, for the 302s, it's 5.090. So that's uh, 65 thousandths shorter since they increased the stroke uh, double that amount. So that's why my cylinder was uh, not getting the compression it needed. Uh, Anyway, till next time.